Well, g'day Curd Nerds. Today we're going to Sweden and I'm going to show you how to make Östkaka. Now, Östkaka is a, a Swedish curd delicacy and Östkaka literally translated means cheese cake. Now it's far from the normal American and English cheesecakes that I'm certainly used to. Uh, this looks kind of like custard that's been baked. So a bit like baked custard, but it's got curds that I made on my very own stove with rennet. And uh, we mixed it with a few other ingredients to get this fantastic looking dessert. Anyway, let me show you how we made Erstkaka. So first of all, don't forget to sanitize your equipment. I normally boil all of my stainless steel equipment in my pot. Now the ingredients for Erstkaka are four liters or one gallon of uh, whole cow's milk, half a teaspoon or 2.5 milliliters of single strength rennet, diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, three quarters of a cup of plain flour, one cup of white sugar, four eggs, one cup of cream, 35% fat, 50 grams or 1.76 ounces of ground almonds, and some raspberries or lingonberries to serve. So measure out your flour and then save one cup of the milk and mix with the flour to form a soft paste. Just pour it into the flour and give it a good whisk. So add your milk to the pot. And then heat the milk to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you've reached the target temperature, just take all of your equipment out of the pot. Now I'm just going to add in the flour and milk mixture. It's a bit like pancake batter. Just give that a quick stir. And just pour that into your milk. And then stir well until the flour milk mixture is mixed in with the milk. Now the target temperature is about the same, so that's good. Now we're going to add the rennet solution to coagulate the milk or set the curds. Don't forget to stir for no more than one minute. And cover and allow the milk to set for one hour. So check for a clean break by putting a knife in, giving a twist and you can see that there's no sloppiness. Cut the curds into 2.5 centimeter or one inch cubes. Do the rest at 45 degrees, which is good enough. And then break up any of the large cubes with the side of the spoon. And then cover and allow those to rest for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, while you're waiting, mix the eggs, sugar and cream together. Give the eggs a quick beat before you add anything else to it. Add your sugar, which is one cup. I'm using two half cup measures there. And then add your cream. It's two half cups, so it's one cup of cream. 
Give that a good stir until it's all combined. Then add the ground almonds and mix that well. I found that the almonds gave the Ostkaka a bit of texture. So once you've finished mixing all that, grab your curds and ladle them into a cheesecloth lined colander. And just gently by hand drain a little bit there. Now I chose to cover and allow the curds to drain for one hour. So an hour later, come back to the curds. Um, we're going to drain any remaining whey that's uh, sitting on the surface by hand just by squeezing the bag gently. And then place the curds back into the pot. You may need to scrape a little bit out there off the cheesecloth. And then we add the prepared mixture to the curds. I'm just using a spatula to get it all out. And then just gently mix that all together. So lightly oil or butter a oven proof dish. And then pour the mixture into the dish. Then preheat your oven to 200 Celsius or 400 Fahrenheit and bake for 30 minutes. And then decrease the temperature to 165 or 325 and bake for a th further 30 minutes. And when it's golden brown on top, and it just jiggles a little bit, then it's time to take it out of the oven. So it took an hour in total to cook mine. Now the oast carcass should be brown on top, should be firm and not sloppy. And that is firm to touch. Now the oast carcass should be served warm. Anyway, back to Gav. Well there you go curd nerds, that was pretty easy to make wasn't it? Just make some curds, drain them for a couple of hours and then mix all the other ingredients in. What did surprise me was adding the flour to the milk up at the start of the process. Very interesting indeed, I didn't think the curds would set but they did. They set very well. Uh, and we've got a very firm looking cheesecake which is good it does it wobbled when it came out of the out of the oven but now that it's it's lukewarm and apparently i've been reading that's the best time to eat it so let's cut open a little bit of this dessert i don't want to put too much on my plate a little bit crusty around the edge which is great i've got this in a, an oven dish it's the size well i normally cook um lasagna in this but let's get a piece of this out it cuts like custard get a decent sized piece out whether I'm able to get it out of the pan without making a big mess is a different story but that doesn't look too bad I think we've got that there let's put that down get out my trusty cake thing Oh, there we go. Nice big slab. That looks nice, doesn't it? That's really good. Um, that's uh, kind of surprised me. Uh, yeah, it's held its shape. It's weeping a little bit away, but it definitely, definitely looks like 
well, like a custard cheesecake type thing, but I love the brown on top, that's lovely. So let's just put this aside. Now, that will obviously um, be eaten over about a week, and we'll be putting that into, uh, into the fridge later on, and we can just heat that up. Apparently it's supposed to be served with some berries, so I've got these lovely little raspberries here. And doesn't that look amazing? I like that a lot. So the Erstkaka can be served with berries like this. It can be served with vanilla ice cream. It can be served with whipped cream as well. But apparently it tastes best when it is lukewarm. So that's definitely what I'm doing here. Let's try some of this bad boy, shall we? Yeah, it's very custard-like texture. The little brown bits you see are, um, are ground almonds. Oh, that's delicious. You know, this reminds me of um, bread and butter pudding that my mum used to make many, many years ago. Mmm. That is delicious. What's it taste like with a berry? How am I going to have it with a berry? Mmm. Mmm. That's nice. Yeah, a fair bit of sugar in it, um, which is good because it needed, I think it needed it, but the other flavours are all there. It's really nice. Mmm. This is a lovely dessert. But yeah, Swedish. It also goes by the name of um, Swedish curd cake. And there's actually two re regions of Sweden where this uh, cheesecake was developed. Um, but I'll leave some details to Wikipedia link for Erstkaka uh, down below in the description if you want to go and have a look at some more information about this lovely Swedish dessert. It's very nice. Apparently they make it around Christmas time. Now, and it's not Christmas time in Australia, but it's certainly cold enough. And you know, sometimes there's a tradition where we have Christmas in July, around about the 23rd to the 25th, depends on when the weekend uh, falls. We usually have a big roast dinner uh, and it's a, a, crisp, a traditional Christmas weather. Unlike normal Christmas here in Australia, where it's stinking hot and we've got the air conditioners blazing. But mind you, we still do a roast dinner. Crazy traditions. Anyway, or a barbie. Barbies are good too. That's a barbecue. Uh, but this is delicious. Mmm. I like the caramelised bit on the top as well. That's lovely. And that's just from being baked in the oven. That's just browned. From the oven so this is a great little dessert and all of you cheese makers out there who have got a little bit of rennet to spare why don't you go and try some of this amazing Swedish Ostkaka well thanks for watching today curd nerds if you like the video or you like this type of video then leave a like and leave a comment down below um, on uh, whether you I think this style of video is uh, is good and informative for you. Uh, and if you want to see more videos, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the little notification bell and you'll get notified when the next video comes out. Well, thanks very much, Curd Nerds. And uh, we will see you next time. I'm trying to find some more Scandinavian-style cheeses or cheese desserts or cheese inspired creation so if anybody's got any ideas hit me up in the comments i've already done norwegian brown cheese which is a whey cheese uh, so i'm not going to do that one again but if anybody's got any other sorts of cheeses from uh, denmark norway sweden and finland then please hit me up i am planning on doing danbo soon which is a washed rind uh, Dan uh not da yeah danish yeah, from Denmark. Danish cheese. So we'll try that soon. Anyway, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.